question is, how should public health practitioners respond to the uh, growing recognition that climate change is uh, in, you know, unalterably changing the way our environment is to the detriment of human populations? I think there's three ways in which public health practitioners can um, proceed. And I'm going to be honest and say that much of what is possible for public health practitioners depends on who the elected government at the time may be, because public health practitioners are usually employed in governmental agencies, and depending on the tolerance of the elected officials for the advocacy of public health practitioners, um, they could find themselves in jeopardy if they are at variance with the official policy of the government of the day. So let's think about this in three different ways in which a public health practitioner can uh, respond to climate change. And I'll categorize them as the micro level, the meso level, and the macro level. The micro level is what you as an individual can do within your own power in your day-to-day -day life. The choices you make about uh, single-use plastics, about where you source your food from, how much plane travel you do, et cetera, et cetera. All of those are decisions that an individual can make for themselves, informed by what the best science is. Secondly, you can work within your organizations, and more and more organizations, and I think public health organizations as well, are committing to enhancing their capacity to reduce their carbon footprint. So the acquisition chain, where you source your material from, uh, how you uh, work with plastics in your own environment, for example, and you commit your organization to principles of action that reduce the impact as much as possible of climate change. On the more macro level is how public health practitioners use what they learn in their public health training about advocacy coalition building, uh, how to get climate change and health policies and all of the various different dimensions of policies that are relevant to health. So similarly to how social determinants of health grew from something that was well understood by public health practitioners and now has become a more mainstream consideration in health policy, I think the same process can be followed for uh, issues related to climate change, where you work your way up that ladder from the micro to the meso to the macro. And this way, uh, individual public health practitioners are less likely to feel that they are somehow jeopardized in their advocacy. The one thing to remember, of course, is that the scientific consensus is very clearly behind uh, the reality of climate change. So that should give people some uh, support and some reason to believe that the actions that they wish to advocate for have some basis in evidence.